Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another episode of Deep Seated Geek. Today I would like to focus on the female perspective in video games. Now I realize I don't really have the necessary equipment to have that sort of opinion, but just bear with me for a second. Recently I've been replaying one of my favorite game series ever, Mass Effect. This is a game series that I have given over 100 hours of my gaming life to and I don't regret a single minute of it. But with this new playthrough, I want to change it up a bit and play with a whole new character. And to make it as different as possible, I was going to play as the female version of Commander Shepard. Now many people have gone on record to say that Femme Shepard's voice work and characterization is leaps and bounds better than the male version. Plus, I kind of want to get a romance going with Garrus. I have such a bromance for that guy. <laughs> but then something in the game interrupted my playthrough. There was a particular mission where I had to go into a bar and convince some military bigwig that he had to work together with a politician in order for me to continue with my storyline. Now I remember this situation from my first time playing the game. The military guy in question was clearly drunk and he had a few choice words for me when we talked, but eventually I got him around to my way of thinking and I got to continue on with my mission. But this time was different. This time around, the guy looked me up and down, you know, practically molesting me with his eyeballs, and I'm paraphrasing at best, but he looked at me and said, Baby, shake that ass. Never in my life have I had such a rage-inducing impulse to reach through a television set, grab this prick by the throat, and say to him, Do you know who I am? I am Commander freaking Shepard, you jackhole! And as I went through the rest of the game, I found a ton of moments where my interactions with people were completely different from the first time I played the game as a male shepherd. The way my crew talked to me, the way I acted around them, all of it had been altered due to the fact that I changed my gender in the game. So it got me thinking, is this sort of behavior noticeable to female gamers? Or are these scenarios so commonplace and grounded in reality that it doesn't even phase them? I went on from there to ask a few of my buddies online what their stance was about playing female characters in-game. A couple of them came back with the usual bro stance, which is that if they had the choice, they would rather stare at a girl's bum than a guy's bum in-game. But one of my buddies in particular actually goes out of his way to never play as a female character. If only because of the fact that he is a big role-playing kind of gamer. And for him to be able to relate to his character, it needs to reflect him in some fashion. Now, I can totally understand that point of view, but just in defense of some video game characters, I can't think of a single guy gamer who felt let down or put off by the fact that at the end of Metroid, it was revealed that Samus, who's the hero throughout the entire series, was actually a girl the whole time. And if we bring it to today's generation of gaming, I can honestly say from experience, I felt no less powerful than Kratos from God of War as I was playing as Noriko from Heavenly Sword. Unfortunately, these are few and far between for strong female characters in video games today. For every Bonnie McFarlane in Red Dead Redemption or Elena Fisher in Uncharted, there are heaps and tons of over-sexualized versions of Bayonettas and physics bouncing boobs in Dead or Alive. Now here's a good case in point. For most fantasy video games out there nowadays, go check out the typical armor for a male warrior. Then go find the equivalent warrior setup for the females. One set protects vital organs, while the other makes the vital organs a target. I'd like to think that the female warriors back in those times actually had a bit more common sense than we give them credit for. I decided to venture a little further in the female gaming waters, where I would go online and play games as a female avatar whenever possible. And I've come across three interesting scenarios in my short time online. One, in Call of Duty, if a female voice is heard on the chat line celebrating a well-deserved victory in a free-for-all match, she is immediately bombarded by sexist slurs. Two, in DayZ, after spending hours trudging through Cherno as a female character alongside a male player that I met in-game, only communicating through text does he finally discover that I in fact am a guy on the other end. Realizing this, he immediately types in big bold letters in the chat, FAG, and logs off the server. Funny, I don't recall flirting with him during the game. 3. In Star Wars The Old Republic, again, playing as a female Jedi, 
I am hit with a message every two minutes in the chat offering to join up with groups, offering help that I do not need, or, more often than not, nice tits. Now, I'm not so oblivious to the fact that this has been happening for years, but here's a few questions I am posing to the female gamers out there. Do you find this sort of online behavior to be the norm? Has it been so prevalent now that it's almost expected? With games like Call of Duty not having a female avatar to represent yourself, do you feel that takes you away from the immersion of the game? And lastly, with female-specific interactions in a game like Mass Effect, does that add a welcome realism to the game world for you? Or does it bring an unwelcome reality to your game and takes away from you being able to roleplay within a fantasy world? So please, share your thoughts, tell me your stories, and maybe, just maybe, this will be another topic for discussion in future episodes. And with that, my end of the discussion has come to a close. And before we end today's episode, I do want to give yet another shout out to a YouTube user out there. The channel in question is called The Gamer's Circuit. And I want to give a particular shout out to this guy because he did the nicest thing in the world and did an entire one of his episodes talking about my channel. And he praised me left, right, and center. He said so many nice things, I almost had a geek tear coming out of my face. I swear to God, it was just such a nice thing. So thank you very much to you and to all the users who have been giving me such high praise. It just, it encourages me to do more and do it bigger and better. And yes, I love you guys. Thank you. So before I get all wishy-washy and let my ego take the best of me, I'm going to end it there and say thank you for watching this episode. If you dig it, hit the like button down below. You want to share it with your friends and family, hit the share button down below. You can sign up on Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff to follow me. You can always subscribe, which is highly recommended because I put out videos every Monday and Friday. And with that, we shall see you next time on Deep Sea to Geek. Take care!